Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the conference so far, and uh, you're ready to talk a bit about uh, automation. That's good. You hear me? OK. Now, I have some stuff to show, so that's better. A uh, few words about me. Uh, my name is Ivan, and I'm working at SiteGround. Uh, I have been working at SiteGround for the past five years and a half, and I've pretty much uh, went through most of the IT departments in the company. And right now, I'm uh, working as an infrastructure uh, engineer, and I am building, designing, and maintaining uh, infrastructures of our biggest clients, such as uh, uh, Yoast SEO, uh, plugin sites of plugins like Monster Insights, uh, WP Forms, and so on. So, uh, enough about me. A uh, few words about what's included in this talk. Uh, first of all, we're going to talk uh, briefly, go through what is automation. Uh, then we'll go in more details about Ansible, WordPress, and uh, how they both can work together. And in the end, I have three videos with uh, practical examples uh, about uh, how can we run Ansible on WordPress. And by automation, I mean uh, creating uh, repeatable instructions so that we replace the human interaction with IT systems, which is always good because, uh, first of all, we are getting more productive. We uh, have more time to pay attention to our more significant and important tasks. And um, also, it reduces the chance of uh, human errors, because we all make mistakes sometimes, and uh, it's not good sometimes. <laughs> so uh, what is Ansible? A few words about Ansible. Uh, this is a software that um, automates our tasks that we usually run manually. So it aims to save time and uh, have us uh, doing something else instead of uh, paying attention to something that we do every day and repeat uh, the repeated actions we do every day. And uh, it is really simple application that is installed on your local computers. And it's only using SSH to connect to remote systems uh, on which it operates. And uh, you don't need to have any exceptional SSH knowledge or scripting knowledge or something like that. It just Danceable is using that, that type of connection to connect to the remote systems. And it's really uh, comfortable because uh, most of its definitions and configurations are uh, written in YAML. So it makes it easy for uh, even unexperienced users to uh, read it and understand it. And these are uh, some of the most common use cases when uh, Ansible is used. Uh, I personally uh, use it for uh, provisioning, for application deployment, for configuration management, and it can also be used for continuous delivery. A uh, few words about the Ansible structures. And uh, today I have created this uh, GitHub repo. So if any one of you is interested, uh, you can go to this link here and just uh, check the wiki page where I have uh, briefly written and explained uh, the things I'm going to say now. So first of all, uh, I would like to mention that uh, I don't like speaking in uh, technical terms only, so uh, I, I all, all, always prefer to compare Ansible to something from real life, and in this case, it's a uh, car assembly factory, <laughs> because uh, in both things, we have a process that we follow every time, which is the same process. Uh, whenever we are assembling a car, we always have the, safe, the same steps, right? So in Ansible, uh, we have playbooks, which are a set of instructions that we are going through every time we are run, running Ansible. So it's kind of uh, similar. And um, we have uh, another part in this software, which, uh, which are called modules. And uh, you can think of modules like the machines in the uh, car factory. I mean, every machine is doing a specific thing, and uh, some of them are forming the metal parts, other machines are putting stuff under the hood, and so on. 
So <coughs> the modules in Ansible are small programs that are designed to do specific things based on the uh, parameters we are passing them. And the tasks are very closely related to modules, and um, the tasks are actually the definitions uh, that we are uh, uh, writing and defining, uh, and then they're using the modules in order to execute what we have uh, written, like conditions, um, when, what should happen when, and uh, so on. Variables and templates are also very important because, uh, like every car manufacturer, we would like to have a lot of modules, uh, models of cars, uh, a lot of co different colors, and so on. Uh, and it's similar in the IT systems as well because, uh, for example, we might have 50 servers, 50 websites, or 50 systems, uh, which are operating almost the same way, but at the same time, uh, we always uh, would like to have some differences between them and uh, keep them unique in some way. So uh, that's how that's where variables and templates are very useful in Ansible. Uh, handlers are practically small tasks that are um, executed after the execution of another tasks, and I'm. Uh, these are some uh, this something more advanced and it's not always used, but um, I decided to uh, briefly explain it. So the code we uh, you are seeing can, uh, at the screen is uh, how we we define a handler, and in this case we just uh, have created a handler that is restarting Apache web servers, uh, nothing else. And in the next slide we have a task. Uh, this task is uh, using the file module in order to um, replace the Apache configuration with the template we are providing. And after that, you can see that we have this notify line, which is uh, practically invoking the handler we have defined. So these two code blocks uh, together are um, what are they doing is replacing the Apache configuration and then restart Apache serv uh, service. And at the end of the things I have said so far can be combined into rows. Uh, <coughs> and usually they are uh, related logically. I mean, we can uh, gather tasks, uh, handlers, variables, and templates that are uh, for the same service, for example, and put them in a single row. Uh, this way, we can easily uh, code that row with only one line, and for example, uh, let's say that we want to install uh, FTP server on uh, somewhere, so we have a few steps that we need to go through, like uh, downloading the package, configuring the service, and so on, and instead of uh, calling the tasks separately uh, each time, we can just put everything in a single row and call this row uh, with one line, and it will uh, do everything for us. And uh, now a few words why uh, Ansible would be uh, beneficial uh, for WordPress. And I think that uh, we all know that there are a lot of uh, applications that allow you to uh, manage your dashboards of your multiple websites and so on, but uh, it's cool when uh, you have the ability to make that from uh, your personal computer and not need to, any, to log anywhere and so on. So, uh, for example, uh, deploying multiple WordPress applications on different servers can be uh, automated. Uh, managing of the WordPress applications such as uh, installing plugins, updating plugins, deleting and so on. Uh, Code deployments can be automated as well because Ansible have, uh, has Git and Subversion modules. And of course, it's uh, not only limited in, uh, to the WordPress application itself, but uh, we can uh, make uh, environmental changes such as changing a single file or uh, changing permission of group of files and so on. Uh, so we pretty much can use Sansible for everything that you are manually doing uh, via SH connection to your servers. 
And uh, here is the link to the uh, GitHub repo again, because uh, I'm not going to dive into details f uh, for the code. Uh, so if you are uh, interested to check the code in details, you can just uh, go there and see what I have uh, pushed so far. Before uh, we go to practical examples, I would like to... Hold on. Uh, I would like to show you my uh, Ansible code base uh, at the moment that I'm using for uh, this presentation. <coughs> so I have three folders, playbooks, projects, and roles. Uh, in the roles folder, I have uh, all of the roles that I have written and I am going to execute. In the playbooks folder, I have all of my playbooks that I'm going to run uh, using Ansible. And uh, maybe the more most important thing of them is in the projects folder. I have one file there called hosts, and that's how it looks like. Uh, as you can see, this file contains the information about all of the servers that I'm going to uh, use Ansible on and uh, make changes on. Uh, here, the thing in the brackets is a group name, so you can group servers, uh, you can put multiple servers, uh, systems, or sites in, in the same group, so you can uh, execute playbooks on them easily. Uh, in that case, I have uh, one system in each group. It's a matter of organization, so uh, it's individual. Uh, here we have the name of uh, the system, and then pretty much we can define variables that um, uh, that need uh, to be assigned to that system only. So in this case, we have Ansible port and Ansible hosts, which are very important because the Ansible uh, application, uh, software is uh, using these two variables in order to connect via SSH. So whatever you type here on these two variables, this will be used for SSH connection whenever you execute the Ansible playbook. And then it's pretty much custom uh, what you add here. <coughs> for the purpose of my playbooks, uh, I needed uh, database user details, database name, uh, WordPress directory, and memcached host and port. And OK, so let's go to the first practical example, which is uh, creating a playbook for new application deployment. And uh, the cool thing is that uh, not only we can uh, deploy a single application on multiple servers, but we can create a bundle uh, with, for example, plugin that you are using on each application or team or, or whatever you like, and uh, have that pre-installed, for example, if you have a plugin that you always use and you need to deploy 10 applications, uh, it's not necessary to have the WordPress inst uh, WordPresses installed and then go to every single one of them and install the plugin. So Ansible will do that uh, automatically for you. So There we go. Uh, first of all, I forgot to mention that uh, Ansible uh, is not working only with uh, predefined configuration files, but uh, we can also use Ansible command in order to pass a single command to a lot, lot of systems or servers. And that's uh, what I am doing in the beginning of uh, that video. Uh, first of all, I am executing a shell model, which is practically passing a shell command to all of my servers. And it is in order to show you that before the playbook execution, there is no such folder on the on my servers, so uh, there is uh, really nothing there. And um, the second command is checking the MySQL databases. Uh, you can again see that there is no such database connect, uh, created at the moment. Uh, and the next thing is uh, running the Ansible playbook command, which is the which is how we trigger the Ansible execution. 
uh, stopping for a second just to explain the parameters. We have uh, specified that the connection should be SSH. The minus I parameter it stands for inventory. So we are uh, specifying our host file here. And then there is the playbook name. The extra vars here is something optional, and uh, it's often uh, avoided. But uh, for my playbooks, in this case, uh, I needed some extra variables to be passed, so uh, I have included this as well. This task gathering facts is something that is done by default every time you run a playbook. And it's practically Ansible is going through the configuration files and loading the variables that you have defined in them. Uh, and now we have here some tasks uh, executed, installing WordPress core, creating database, and creating database user, which uh, here have different status, as you can see. And this is because I have created a database user initially uh, on purpose to show you the, uh, the differences in the stats. Uh, the create database status is uh, changed, which means the database is created. And then on create database user, we have just OK, which means that uh, Danceable is remembering the states of the tasks. And uh, once uh, it saw that uh, the database user is already existing, uh, it, it's doing nothing except to print this OK message to show you that um, everything is OK and proceeding with the execution. Uh, then we have configuring WordPress and installing WordPress. This is our uh, these are practically uh, WPCLI commands for initi uh, initiating the application. And then we have another play here, which is installing uh, our four plugins that we want to have pre-installed on, on our applications. So I have picked here four random plugins which have been installed. And this event is play recap, which tells us that we have some OK tasks, some change tasks, and we have no failures, which is good. And um, then uh, I'm again running some Ansible comments in order to show you that after the playbook execution, there is already some content on the servers. So here you can see that uh, we have a folder created and the uh, uh, WordPress core files are there. So we have installed something. Uh, then proceeding with uh, checking the database to see if there is anything created. And you can see that we, ha we have database created with the WordPress core tables. And um, the last thing is to check the plugin list with WPCLY command. And uh, in order to show you that um, we have also the four plugins we've defined pre-installed on our four applications. So pretty much uh, for the likes of uh, 40 seconds or 50 seconds, we have installed four applications WordPress on four different servers. And we added four plugins to each of them. So it's, uh, I think it's really uh, good timing and saving time <coughs> compared to doing that manually. Uh, the next example is managing plugins and teams. And I think that's very useful because whenever you are managing uh, 20 or 30 sites and uh, you see on the internet that some of the plugins you know that you are using but you, you are not sure exactly wh where, uh, has a new version and you need to update it. Uh, it's uh, more comfortable to just have something uh, automated there, which uh, you can uh, tell update this plugin on all my applications. And uh, it automatically uh, goes through all of your applications and updates the plugin uh, whenever it needs. So this is my uh, second video here. So the first thing I'm doing here is going to only two of my uh, WordPress sites and delete this uh, plugin called Booking. Here is, here is the confirmation that uh, the plugin has been deleted. And uh, then I'm verifying that it is uh, not present 
on this uh, these two hosts, we should get uh, an error like that. Uh, after that, I'm uh, executing the Ansible playbook command with my plugins.yml file, which is the playbook for uh, for this uh, row. Again, gathering the facts, going through the uh, configuration files to load some variables. And uh, we have here tasks checking if plugin booking is present. We had some errors there. And then we reach the task updating the plugin. Uh, you can see that in the recap, we have two failed tasks. And this is because here, if checking if plugin booking is present, which is practically WPCLI is installed command, uh, this command failed on two of our hosts because we deleted the plugin previously. And the thing is that uh, whenever there is a failed task on some of uh, your systems, these systems are excluded until the rest of the play. So since on project one and project two, uh, we got errors for the plugin and uh, we don't have it installed there, they're excluded until the end of the play. And uh, at the end, we are up updating the plugin only on project three and project four, where the plugin is present. So uh, this can be done with uh, a lot more uh, systems and uh, servers. So uh, I think that this will save time uh, and is very useful instead of going through each site that you are managing and updating the plugin uh, manually. And uh, at the end, a uh, quick check to show you that uh, the plugin is installed on project three and four and is not present or one on end two. Uh, the next thing is uh, code deployment. Uh, because of the Git and Subversion uh, modules that Ansible provides, uh, it's very comfortable to uh, use them in order to clone repos, push to uh, different repos, and so on. In that example, um, I am uh, cloning uh, a repo from GitHub, and then I'm deploying uh, the object cache file to all of my uh, systems. Uh, after which uh, I'm changing some of the I'm changing the host and the port inside the object uh, cache PHP file based on what I have written in my inventory file. So, if I have uh, a different server and different port for my memcached service uh, for each site, I just can define them in the inventory file and then change the file automatically on each of the servers. Again, a quick check to show you that uh, on the applications that uh, we have installed, there is no object cache.php file at the moment. And here is again the Ansible playbook command. Uh, I'm defining the inventory file and the memcached installation.yml, which is my playbook for uh, this role. Uh, the first task here is cloning the uh, the repo from GitHub. Uh, then the second one is distributing the file to all of the servers. Then here is a task for fixing some permissions. And then we have setting a hostname and setting a port. You can see in the output how the default uh, port and uh, hosts are changed on the different servers. So there you go. Well, we had uh, this IP replaced with this IP, which is the one that I have defined in my inventory file, and so on. And um, in the end, just a quick check to show you that uh, we already have the object cache.php after the execution of the playbook. And then a quick comment to show you that the host and the ports on some of the servers are changed. And as you can see, they are different everywhere. So it's pretty much whatever you have defined in your inventory file and whatever you need can be uh, set up using Ansible. And uh, of course, environmental changes. Uh, I don't have a, an example for that, but uh, just want to mention that uh, it's really comfortable with, uh, in order to 
change files inside uh, your applications. For example, if you need to uh, block some IP or bad bot, whatever, uh, on all of your applications, you can just uh, change the HD access file on all of, all of your applications uh, using Cansible at the same time. And um, or for example, if you want to uh, set up WordPress in subfolders to reconfigure it to work in subfolder, you can do that at the same time on multiple servers. And um, that's really uh, saving time when, when it comes to uh, changing files or something like that. And uh, the conclusion of, of that is that, in my opinion, uh, Ansible could uh, save you a lot of time uh, whenever uh, it comes to uh, your day-to-day -day tasks related to WordPress and uh, whenever you are doing the same thing over and over again. And uh, as I like to say, uh, if you do one and the same thing twice, that it need, uh, then it needs to be automated because uh, you don't need to waste more time doing that again and again. And that was all. Thank you for your attention. Any questions if you have?